For the past year and a half, I've lived in my minivan and been to all the states in the lower 48. Now I'm switching adventures and going to hike the Appalachian Trail this year, which is from Georgia to Maine and might take me six or seven months. So what does that mean for living in my van? The short answer is, I don't know. But I'm going on a little camping trip with my van tonight and I'd love to have you come along with me and I'll tell you everything I'm thinking. I really wanted to go on a camping trip just because, you know, I've been staying with my family since the holidays and since I have my van, I definitely want to use it. Also, I have a cool new foldable saw to test out. But problem is the sun is going to set soon, so I have to gather firewood and start making dinner before the sun sets, hopefully. But first, I want to have a beer first because it has not been the easiest day. It's been really stressful getting ready and stuff. I put it off for a long time because I just, I don't know. It's hard going from sitting on a, sitting on the couch and being in Wi-Fi, having warm water coming out of sink to having none of that. So I was kind of dreading it and putting it off for a long time. And then in the end, that just caused me more stress. So before I start everything I need to do, let's just relax, take a breath, Enjoy a beer. That is so good. Definitely the more I drink beer, the more I know how to pick out kinds that I like. This one tastes a little fruity, citrusy, maybe even mango-y. It's really good. All right, put it in a koozie and let's get to work. There's like a pile of wood over around that way that I think is there for people to take from. This is a free camping place, by the way. It's called Salem Lake. It's by Elizabethtown if you're from Kentucky and wanna come here. This isn't a hunk of a pile of firewood like I thought it was. I guess it's I don't know. Why would why would there be this giant hill of dirt in this field? This looks like stuff that would be okay to take though. I brought back an armload of wood, but it's very, very long and it would be better to burn if they were cut into pieces. So, perfect opportunity to use my new folding saw. This is from Lagom. And it is designed to be super beginner friendly. Um, the way it was designed with like the power and everything, I don't, uh, it was a bunch of stuff I don't remember. Okay, now that I'm not racing the sun to go down and I can think more clearly, I can tell you the arc grinding saves your effort by 39%. The specially designed screw nut will prevent it from loosening up over time. The three-gear design prevents the knife from releasing early, making it safer to carry around. It has a full metal handle covered with plastic, making it high quality and easy to grip. The blade features impulse hardened teeth for longer service life and is coated with Teflon to prevent rusting. It's made with high carbon steel, SK5, to make it last longer. There's really so many features but it w seems like it's very like thoughtfully created. Like the power of the sawing motion is not um, being lost anywhere, you know, it's like, it's designed to make it easier. But look at this beautiful thing. It's so shiny and fancy. I love the colors too. Reminds me of Australia. And then you push this little thing down to fold it open. And then there's a notch, so you know it won't go anywhere. And it says Lagom. Journey of a thousand miles begins with a single pull. Let's start off with the smaller one and then work our way up. Also, I want to mention it's been raining a lot lately. Today was one of the few dry days we had. So I'm hoping it dried out enough, but I don't know. I'm nervous. Already the teeth are really gripping it. I'm not even pressing down that hard and it's going really well. 
I bet at that point we can just stomp on it. Let's see. Woo! How satisfying was that? <laughs> All right, did great with the little one. Let's see how it goes on something a little thicker. I'm always surprised how fast the teeth just start cutting in right away. This is warming me up, that's for sure. This saw lets you spend less time setting up camp and more time enjoying it. If I didn't have this, I'd probably have to find more small pieces, carry over more wood back and forth, and there's no way I would have gotten done before the sun went down. Even though this was my very first time, I had no problems at all, and it definitely feels sturdy and like it'll hold up for a long time. I've heard of the inside of wood turning blue because of a bark beetle in Colorado, and I'm sure other places, just Colorado to name one, but I wonder why this is yellow. That's all I'm going to saw for now, but this thing is so handy. And to put it away, you just push the same thing down and fold it back. And it's really nice too, because think about like, if you wanted to take this on a backpacking trip, it's pretty light and it's obviously not going to cut anything because the blade folds into this nice handle. Especially with being in my van and stuff, it's hard carrying tools like this because whatever it's against, I don't want it to scratch or cut up. But with this, so handy. Just goes right into the handle and that fully keeps the blade away from cutting or scratching anything else. This is lint, dryer lint that I'm trying to write or light, so I don't know why it's not working. Come on. There we go. Now this wood is super wet. I only used twigs that would snap, but still I'm worried. This is the first time I've really had a chance to sit down all evening. At first the fire didn't want to start, especially working with, you know, wet wood was challenging, but once you get that flame going, you can maneuver it so that your wet wood is drying while your somewhat flammable wood is going. So finally, I get a chance to tell you what I'm thinking with the van situation. Like I said, I don't really know. It's just gonna depend on, at the end of the trail, what I feel like doing. On one hand, I'm thinking a next adventure after the AT could be, what if I took my van and drove down to Mexico, back up through the west coast of the US, and all around Canada. But I also really miss international travel and being on planes. I guess Canada and Mexico are international, but I miss getting out of outside of North America and plane travel and staying in hotels and hostels and that whole scene. So another cool adventure could be, what if I took a certain amount of money, let's say $10,000 and I was like, okay, my goal is to get to 20 countries, 30 countries, I don't know. But that could be really cool too, country hopping, you know? Another thing to think about is gonna be my financial situation. 
Um, I'm, I love my van and I think it would make a perfect adventure vehicle for any solo traveler. And if I can't drive it till the wheels fall off, I'm hoping maybe I could sell it and give someone else the gift of exploring with it. I guess it wouldn't be a gift because they would pay for it, but I don't know. There are so many places to see and ways to see them that it's just going to depend on what I feel like. For dinner, I'm basically having a vegetarian chicken-ish sandwich, but in a pie iron, which is this thing. If you're not familiar, I believe they're also called pudgy pie makers, but uh, first I'm gonna cook one of these, put it on a bun, put some greens and some cheese, and then heat it up a little more. Cheapo buns were the same as fancy buns, so I was like, mm, this looks good. How is it gonna turn out though? We will see. All right, on the ground because it's fresh off the coals. Let's see. Doesn't look too bad. That's my breath. If you see smoke, that's probably just my breath. Honestly, this might be kind of bad, but I'm committed now. It's good, actually, and I'm not sure if it's just I worked for it, you know, it was hard to make a fire, but I did it anyway, and now I get to eat this food, so psychologically, I think it's good. Or it might be that it really is good. So to report back on dinner, the first one I had, there were some bites that weren't so good. So on the second one, I was like, well, let's try it without the greens this time, because maybe that's why I don't like it. It's just not meshing. The flavors aren't meshing, you know? So I was like, um, this time, no greens and no cheese. Let's see how that works out. You know, simple, but maybe it'll work out better. And that one I burnt. So neither of them were that good. Really, it wasn't that good of a dinner, especially for how much trouble it was, but that's okay. I will always love sitting by a fire. Also, if you haven't heard, I am trying to rent out my van while I'm on the AT. Someone has said they want to have it for the spring and the beginning of the summer, so that's perfect. But, you know, it's still wide open for anyone else. So please comment if you're feeling that and we'll find a way to get in touch. It's weird to admit it, but how well my YouTube series on being on the AT does matters too. Views and subscribers are just numbers, but it is very rewarding to feel seen by a lot of people and I do make a living because of it. So a lot of factors are going into it. And if you're wondering if like settling down and being in one place for a long time is really an option. I don't think so. When I was um, just graduated college and started out doing seasonal jobs that helped me travel, I was like, mm, I think I'll do this till I'm 25. And then I was like, mm, maybe late 20s. And then I was like, mm, maybe when I'm 30. But now I am 30 and still want to keep on seeing the world. There would be a advantages to having the everyday conveniences of having a house and a steady place, belonging to a community, getting to know people, being part of a group of friends. If I was in my hometown, being a bigger part of my family's life. But yeah, I don't see myself doing that anytime soon. There's just too much world out there for me to explore. And if I live in a van again, would I get a different van? You know, would I upgrade? And no, I really don't think so. I would rather have more money to travel with instead of having a nicer thing to travel in. But that's just me. I can see both sides of it for sure. And if I was traveling with someone, that would change things too. Well, as you can see, I think my fire is just down to the coals now. So I'll probably let this burn as much as possible and then go to bed. But 
This was awesome. A morale boost I didn't even know I needed. I was so cold last night. Even once I kind of warmed up inside my sleeping bag, I was still curled up, couldn't unfurl myself to stretch out normally. But this view kind of makes up for it. I've been thinking about the word untethered, and I think that's a good way to describe my life. Not tethered down to any career or job I can't leave, don't even have any pets or anything, no relationships that make me stay in one place for a long time. But, you know, whether I choose to live in my van after the AT or not, now living the way I do, I'll always have a little bit of wanderlust and a little bit of homesickness wherever I go. And homesickness, not even exactly for the house I grew up in, but for people and even not here in Louisville, you know, I'll always miss college. I'll always miss living in my van. I'll always miss a little bit of everywhere. But if that's the price I pay, that's okay with me. As nice as this has been, I better get a move on. Got some other things to do today, but thank you for being here with me. And hey, if you wouldn't mind, I've been using a new microphone. So if you could tell me if you see any difference in my audio or just if you've never seen one of my videos before, if you can tell me if you thought this video had good audio. I'm really curious, you know? Every video I make, I try to get a little better on, so that'd be really nice to know. And hey, if you don't feel like commenting, maybe hit the thumbs up, maybe subscribe, maybe hit the thumbs down if you really want. But thank you for watching this. Hope to see you again.